Speak Amazon domain name equals news greater than you are standing on a street corner. Lost. You pull out a device. A map flickers to life. A small blue dot tells you exactly where you are. It feels simple. Effortless. Almost magical. But this magic is an illusion. It's a carefully constructed system. An invisible architecture that surrounds the entire planet. This system was born in the darkest days of the Cold War. It was designed for nuclear submarines and stealth bombers. It was a weapon of unimaginable strategic power. And it was never, ever meant for you. This is the story of the global positioning system. It's the untold blueprint of secret military projects. Of impossible engineering challenges. And the surprising decision that gave this billion-dollar weapon to the world. For free. To know where you are, you need a map. But a map is just a picture. To find your place on it, you need reference points. On Earth, this is called trilateration. If you know your distance from three known points, you can pinpoint your location. It's simple geometry. But what if your reference points are not on Earth? What if they are moving at 14,000 kilometers per hour? What if they are hundreds of miles above your head? This was the fundamental challenge of GPS. The blueprint called for a constellation of satellites. A fleet of 24 machines, weaving a precise net around the globe. Each satellite would broadcast a simple signal. A timestamp. It would constantly shout, the time is X, and I am here. A receiver on the ground would listen to these signals. It would compare the time the signal was sent with the time it was received. The tiny delay is the travel time of the signal. Since the signal travels at the speed of light, this delay equals distance. Get a distance from one satellite, you are somewhere on a giant sphere. Get a distance from a second, you are on the circle where two spheres intersect. With a third satellite, you narrow it down to two points. A fourth satellite confirms your exact, three-dimensional location. The theory was elegant. The reality was a nightmare. And it all hinged on one, single, impossible variable, time. For the system to work, every satellite clock and every ground station clock had to be perfectly synchronized. If a satellite's clock was off by just one millionth of a second, the location on Earth would be wrong by 300 meters. The system needed accuracy down to the nanosecond. A billionth of a second. Mechanical clocks were useless. Quartz clocks were not good enough. The answer was found inside the atom itself. An atomic clock. These devices used the consistent, predictable vibration of cesium atoms as a pendulum. They were the most accurate timekeepers ever created. But in the 1960s, they were the size of a refrigerator. The first great challenge was miniaturization. Engineers had to shrink a laboratory-grade instrument into a box that could survive a rocket launch. It had to withstand the vacuum of space and solar radiation. It had to function flawlessly for years, with no one to fix it. It was a monumental feat of engineering. But even with perfect atomic clocks, a deeper problem emerged. A problem predicted decades earlier by Albert Einstein. His theory of special relativity states that time slows down for a fast-moving object. The GPS satellites are moving incredibly fast. Their onboard atomic clocks tick slightly slower than clocks on Earth. About 7 microseconds slower every single day. But Einstein's theory of general relativity adds another twist. It states that time moves faster in weaker gravity. The satellites are far from Earth's gravitational pull. This effect speeds their clocks up. About 45 microseconds faster every day. Combine the two effects, and the satellite clocks run faster than ground clocks by 38 microseconds daily. It sounds tiny. Insignificant. But if uncorrected, this relativistic effect would cause navigation errors of 10 kilometers every single day. Within minutes, the entire system would be useless. The architects of GPS had to build Einstein's theories directly into the system's core logic. Every calculation performed by your receiver accounts for the bending of space-time. You are using applied relativity just to find the nearest coffee shop. This was the blueprint, a fleet of satellites with atomic clocks, constantly corrected for relativity, managed by a global network of ground stations. An engineering marvel on an unprecedented scale. But it begs the question, why build it? Who needed this godlike precision? The answer lies in the Cold War. The United States and the Soviet Union stood on the brink of nuclear war. The world was held hostage by the doctrine of mutually assured destruction. This doctrine only worked if your weapons could hit their targets. In the 1950s, the US Navy had a terrifying new weapon. The Polaris submarine a stealthy hunter, carrying nuclear missiles. It could surface anywhere in the world's oceans and launch a devastating strike. But it had a critical weakness. To launch accurately, the submarine had to know its exact position. In the middle of the ocean, with no landmarks, this was incredibly difficult. Navigators used stars, 
but cloudy skies could render that useless. They used radio beacons, but the signals were imprecise. The Navy needed a new way to navigate. A way that worked anywhere, in any weather. This need gave birth to a secret project called Tomation. Led by a brilliant engineer named Roger L. Easton. Tomation pioneered the use of precise clocks in space to measure location. The first Tomation satellite was launched in 1967. It carried a quartz clock, a major step forward. Later versions would carry the first atomic clocks into orbit. Meanwhile, the U.S. Air Force had a similar problem. They needed to guide their long-range bombers and intercontinental ballistic missiles. They developed their own classified program, Project 621B. This system imagined a constellation of satellites broadcasting pseudorandom noise codes. A receiver could use these codes to calculate its position. It was a different approach to the same problem. By the early 1970s, the U.S. Department of Defense had multiple, competing, and very expensive satellite navigation projects. A decision had to be made. In 1973, a group of top military officers and engineers met at the Pentagon. The meeting was tense. The Air Force and Navy factions each defended their own system. A young Air Force colonel named Bradford Parkinson was tasked with forging a compromise. He took the best ideas from all projects. He combined the Navy's focus on ultra-precise clocks from Tomation with the Air Force's brilliant signal structure from Project 621B. The result was a new, unified system. They called it the Navigation Technology Program. We know it today as Navstar GPS. This was not a public works project. It was designated as a military program, funded from a classified budget. Its primary purpose was force multiplication. To make American weapons more accurate. More lethal. GPS would allow a single smart bomb to do the work of a hundred conventional bombs. It would guide cruise missiles through enemy defenses. It would coordinate troop movements on a chaotic battlefield. It was the ultimate military high ground. A strategic asset the Pentagon would guard jealously. So how did it end up in the hands of civilians around the world? The system was growing. The first Navstar satellite launched in 1978. Throughout the 1980s, more were sent into orbit aboard Delta rockets. It remained a guarded military secret. Then, on September 1, 1983, a tragedy shocked the world. Korean Airlines Flight 007, a civilian Boeing 747, was flying from New York to Seoul. Due to a small navigational error, it drifted off course. It strayed into forbidden Soviet airspace over the Kamchatka Peninsula. Soviet air defense was on high alert. A fighter jet was scrambled. It identified the 747 as an intruder. Two air-to-air -air missiles were fired. The civilian airliner was shot down. 269 passengers and crew were killed. The world was horrified. The incident was a stark reminder of Cold War tensions. But it also highlighted a fundamental vulnerability. Civilian navigation technology was dangerously outdated. In the aftermath, a surprising announcement came from the White House. President Ronald Reagan declared that once GPS was fully operational, it would be made available for peaceful, civilian use. Everywhere. To anyone. For free. It was a stunning act of technological diplomacy. A way to ensure such a navigational tragedy could never happen again. But the military was not willing to give away its crown jewel entirely. They insisted on a compromise. A digital safety switch. It was called selective availability. The military would broadcast two signals from the satellites. One was the encrypted, highly accurate P code, for precision. This was for military use only. The other was the CA code, for course acquisition. This was the civilian signal. And the Pentagon deliberately introduced timing errors into it. It made the public signal about 10 times less accurate. The military could find a target within a few meters. A civilian user would be lucky to get within 100 meters. It was a technological leash. A way to maintain the military advantage. Despite the degraded accuracy, civilian innovation exploded. Surveyors used GPS to map land with unprecedented speed. Shipping companies used it to track fleets across vast oceans. Airlines began installing early, bulky GPS receivers. But selective availability was a barrier. It prevented the true revolution. Then, the Cold War ended. The world changed. The original justification for degrading the signal began to fade. Commercial pressure was building. Companies saw the immense potential of precise location data. Finally, on May 2, 2000, another president made a crucial decision. President Bill Clinton ordered selective availability to be turned off. Permanently. At midnight, a switch was flipped at the Air Force Space Command in Colorado. No satellites were launched. No software was updated on the ground. 
but in that single moment, every civilian GPS receiver on the planet became 10 times more accurate. A hiker's handheld device, once accurate to the size of a football field, was now accurate to the size of a small room. The leash was removed. The revolution began. This decision unleashed the modern world. It enabled turn-by-turn navigation. It created the foundation for ride-sharing and food delivery apps. It revolutionized farming, allowing for precision planning and harvesting. It aids in disaster response and scientific research. This entire ecosystem of innovation rests on that one decision. The decision to transform a weapon of war into a tool for humanity. So the next time you look at that blue dot on your screen, remember the blueprint. Remember the colossal engineering. The atomic clocks in orbit. The calculations that tame Einstein's relativity. Remember the secret military projects born from fear. And remember the pivotal choice to share this power with the world. It is a system built on the paradox of human ingenuity. A technology designed to perfect the art of war. That was gifted to the world to help us find our way. Less than slash Amazon domain slash speak.